many journalists have been quiet for a very long time around Malema's vicious attacks on many other people, particularly, for example, whites, particularly, for example, farmers as a general category. And there's been not only a silence, but often a going along with Malema for the ride. And suddenly, when Malema turned on the journalists, the journalists pulled back and said, this is totally unacceptable. Okay, so let's go back a little bit to what you say <coughs> is Sanaf's path towards encouraging censorship. If you read those court papers, which you have done very carefully, you'll see that the requested remedy is certainly not to say he mustn't be allowed to speak, that he should be censored. It is um, asking the, co the courts to intervene in a particular kind of, race, of, of hatred against journalists and of a calling upon followers to attack them. I think that's quite a different thing to say that we're looking for a blanket censorship of him, not at all. I think any study of um, media coverage of the EFF will show that it has received fair coverage for the duration of its existence. People will argue, as you have in the second part of your question, um, that he gets too much coverage and that he gets sweet art coverage. Um, that may well be so, but the figures don't don't back that up. It shows that ahead of the election, the EF got, EFF got about 10% of total coverage, which aligned with the, with the political support that they enjoy. Now, you say that the media ignored his pattern of rhetorical hatred against people until it came for us. I would argue that that's not so. And I take you back to my graphic here, which I'm very happy to send you. Mm -hmm. In fact, the media has covered, covered that campaign um, since it started and has given... I would argue, quite critical coverage to that language of rhetoric. Myself, I've been doing so and noting these instances since I first uh, saw it early in um, 2018, and then we have included every single instance where it's been slitting the throats of whiteness in relation to his language about Athel Trollope, whom the EFF supported mm -hmm. uh, to lose his job as the, the mayor, mm -hmm. um, as a DA mayor in Nelson Mandela Bay, all the way through to August 2019, where the EFF attacked um, Minister Gordon at the podium of Parliament. Mm -hmm. So in that includes journalists, many attacks on journalists, but it also includes the EFF's violence against Vodacom, its violence against H&M, all the ways in which this young, interesting party has become South Africa's leading vector of violence. So I don't think in here, in my coverage and in other journalists, do you see us seeking the special treatment uh, for journalists as a body of people. Why do many journalists play along with those evil games of Cambridge Analytica and others when it's targeting someone they want to target and cry foul when it's targeting them? So I'll step back a little and just show you how I think we have a mini Cambridge Analytica help taking place in South Africa at the moment. I think we have active troll farms being run by the so-called fight back campaign um, being staged against President Cyril Ramaphosa. And that's a collection of forces. It can look like ANC stroke EFF, including SASCO. And I think they're feeding off the fact that we have such a high unemployment rate. You can probably buy young people to click and to, to be your trolling army. Uh, you see it happening in Nigeria at the moment. And I think its implications for our democracy and for who gets into power and how tolerant we are of state capture is a story that's not even begun to be written. So it's really something that's where proper investigation and resources are necessary. Otherwise, the implications can be particularly hurtful to us. Why is it that journalists can sometimes play along with those viral crowds. I do think that the era of social media has both been kind to journalism and it has been enormously destructive of it. Um, in my opinion, mm -hmm. as an older journalist, there's far too much opinion going on and mm -hmm. far too many um, uh, journalists who are exercising those opinions because it's far, far easier to do it. You just need this thing in your hands and you become an actor. And often journalists are influencers in society. They have very large Twitter or Facebook followings. And they, I think, enjoy the power of having people go along with you. 
in my own practice, and I can only speak for the sum of one now, is recognizing that you can do that requires a very deep think on our parts of how do you bring your ethical code into your social media practice? So for me, it's meant thinking very carefully. And when I comment on something, I'll say this is a comment. And if I'm doing news, I'll say this is news. And for me, those are practices that more and more of us have to undertake. And also be careful to understand that you not only have um, the power of the pen, as it was in the old days, the power of mass media, but where you have large followings, you can be destructive on social media. Um, that's not a popular view, I don't think. Um, and it is something that probably SANF's leadership will have to apply itself to. How do you take your, your practice as enshrined in the press or the broadcasting code of ethics and apply that to your work on social media? Now, there's something else I want to take up with you. In your first article afterwards, you said something like, uh, after something I didn't, oh, put on your big girl panties because this you is said that. A, I didn't that, say this that. is a day on this is the, a day on the job. And later you said that because I had complained, I was sounding wimpish. Now, what kind of world do we want to create? Do we want to create a patriarchal world where we must just be subject to abuse where we must kind of women must pretend to be men or do you want to create a world where we treat each other like where we treat each other with civility even with love i would prefer to live in that world where people do get given a second chance i right. certainly would love to live in a world where people behave with civility and are decent and I have to be honest that I try most times with decent people to be civil and decent. No you weren't with me, and I've always been civil with you. Saying something wimpish, saying that something's wimpish is not uncivil. Fine. Saying that something's wimpish. I think wimpish it's uncivil, is, but it's you, within your rights of free speech. Eh? But, well, I don't think it's uncivil. I mean, we've got different criteria sure. around uncivil. But I never said put on your big girl panties. You said that. I think that would have been uncivil, which shows you that people have different criteria sure. for uncivil. And I don't think that being tough is patriarchal at all. I think women can be just as tough as men and can be just... I think you are holding up a male standard. A male standard? Mm -hmm. I only hold up my standard. I don't, uh, I don't... What is a male standard and a female standard? I think what you were saying is don't, claim, don't proclaim, don't claim, don't write that women face a particular form of violence on social media, which I would argue that we do. It's sexualized, it's gender-based, it's particularly violent when it's an attack of, and I've studied the, what's happened to women journalists, not a special claim, but there is that regard. And I think you were saying that cannot be. It's all equal. When you were the editor of City Press, you ran a picture of Jacob Zuma with his genitalia hanging out. Does it make it better because it is a man than if it's a woman? No, not at all. Um, so then why are we deserving a special treatment as women when we publish pictures of men with their genitalia hanging out. I think that there were different levels of power in that Brett Murray painting. It came at a certain moment in time. I do believe that the sexualized attacks on women journalists, the gendered attacks on women journalists, are recognized as being uh, particularly pernicious and that can drive women journalists out of political journalism and investigative journalism. And this is written around the world, um, reported, everywhere from the Philippines uh, to Vietnam to the US to Europe, it's recognized that this is a different category. I certainly think that sexual harassment is a great threat to women in professions everywhere. Um, and this may well be a, a very large part of it as well. And I do believe in being civil and I do believe in being decent. And I think Twitter is a sewer. But I also believe that when people behave viciously, it is appropriate to fight back and to give them what they deserve without classifying what they say as hate speech and prohibiting it if it does not meet the criteria of the Constitution.